my book on Islam affiliate is not actually currently available, which is rather annoying. Uh, it's uh, undergoing a brief rewrite and a reissue quite soon. But uh, I came up with the term Islamophilia because really, first of all, I've become so bored of hearing what I think of as being its sort of opposite, the word Islamophobia, which had been around for so many years and meant so little, uh, or at least what it did mean was so wrong and so irritatingly wrong. Um, I thought something far more prevalent was um, not a phobia, um, certainly not an irrational fear of Islam, but but a sort of um, a weird uh, love of Islam, not by not by Muslims, but by by non-Muslims. It'd be understandable for Muslims to to love Islam. It was just rather strange that so many people who were not Muslims and in many cases seemed to know absolutely nothing about Islam uh, were so enamoured of the religion. And um, I just have been noticing this for a long time. Um, uh, everyone from actors and movie stars to uh, prime ministers and presidents um, who would be critical and understandably and rightly critical of any and all belief systems uh, should they need to be, but who, when it came to Islam, only talked in this sort of slathering of praise and adoration. I mean, uh, I lost count of the numbers of politicians who started in the last 15 years quoting in speeches their favorite bits of the Quran. <laughs> sort of, why did he, why are you doing and, that? And of course, Barack Obama said that the most beautiful sound is the call to prayer, right, of the Hazan. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are so many cases of it, and it, to my mind, it seemed far more prevalent and uh, uh, um, obvious than, uh, than, as I say, its opposite. So, um, so no, I, I, my, my favorite, personal favorite is an exhibition called A Thousand and One Islamic Inventions, which toured the science museums of the Western world, including America and uh, Great Britain and other countries. And this exhibition basically uh, advocated, it was totally anti-scientific, really. It was an act of uh, proselytism by the Muslim Brotherhood is how it started out. Um, but uh, this exhibition basically posited that um, Islam had invented the entire world, not just the creation of the world, but everything since um, uh, um, landscape gardening and also urban planning. Um, uh, almost all successes of science, cinema, and it did this amazing sort of Soviet style uh, um, reverse engineering on on history and indeed on facts and and because it but because it was a thousand and one islamic inventions um you know it passed muster i mean if if anyone <laughs> had tried to claim that any other religion had sort of been responsible for absolutely every scientific invention then um then people would raise an eyebrow and certainly wouldn't hand over the science museum uh, uh, in the national capital to such a piece of uh, casuistry but you know, on this occasion they did, and as I said, that, that's an example of our Islamophilia right in front of you. I've actually been exposed to this type of thinking in my own scientific work, where someone, usually from that part of the, the world, or at least of that faith, will write to me to say, oh, but you know that Charles Darwin is not really the guy who should be most uh, known yeah. for the theory of evolution, and then they'll cite some guy, and then through some unbelievably sort of gratuitous route of mental gymnastics, the real inventor uh, discover of the theory of evolution as some guide. But I think this is a, a manifestation of identity politics. I mean, you see the same thing right. with African studies, right? Every single, I right. mean, right? The ancient Greeks were really uh, blacks, right? And and then, so, so ev every single group that feels somehow aggrieved rewrites history so that all of the great wonders of the, of the world are really theirs, right? Yes, and I mean, uh, th th uh, my favorite example was the rewriting of the Wright brothers, uh, uh, where the Wright brothers were wrong, uh, that they didn't invent flight. <laughs> flight was invented by a Muslim in, I think, the 10th century, or an Andalusia or something. And the actual uh, um, historical descriptions of this guy is, is, is there was a guy who, who kept on flinging himself off high buildings <laughs> and falling to earth at an incredible speed. Right. Um, or, or just ju jumping from any 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 place and committing suicide becomes the invention of flight, right? Yeah, and it, it was it was it was really strange because they they sort of attributed a man who just plummeted a lot. Uh, um, okay. They attributed to him the gift of uh, sort of the invention of flight. Um, and as you say, I mean, the, the game is to, in, to to come up with somebody so obscure 
that that sort of everyone sort of baffled and because we're all polite you know westerners uh, if anyone says that anyone else invented anything we're like, well sure it sounds good you know who would i be to right to produce any counter facts 